Okay, you guys, um, it's 1032. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick us off. And uh, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you um, to start our presentation, please. Okay, well, first of all, I just wanted to thank everyone who is attending. Uh, this is the first of hopefully will be other series that we will have. Um, and this is, you know, welcome to Tom's Truck, uh, Tom's Truck Center Truck Talk. Um, the reason what we wanted to kind of make this happen and bring this forward is just all of the surrounding questions that are going around right now currently with a lot of our own customers that are trying to navigate through the diesel regulations and all of the ZEV or zero emission vehicles that you know are out there, a lot, of talk, a lot of talk around that. So we wanted to kind of bring some of the information as we see it uh, and as we interpret it uh, forward. This is gonna be very quick. Um, make sure to have maybe some questions to, to write down. Know that this is being recorded and also that there's a Q&A button at the very top. It should be at the top of your screen there. Uh, so please feel free to ask questions as we're going, and we will have some time at the end of this presentation to go over those. But let's go ahead and move forward here. So let's talk about the agenda real quick. But first, before we get to that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Tim Manzano. I'm the Vice President of Sales at Tom's Truck Center. And with me today is Lisa McGee. She is the ZEV Programs and Affairs Manager, our resident expert for some of those more complicated questions we might have. Uh, and again, we are Tom's Truck Center. We have a couple locations. We have uh, in, in Santa Fe Springs, California, and also in Santa Ana. Uh, so the agenda, you know, why are we here today? That's um, obviously the, the biggest one that we need to talk about. What, what's going on with the, you know, navigating diesel regulations right now? And, you know, what are the options? Um, you know, how do I extend my fleet's life? And then going into some quick final tips and takeaways. Uh, and again, as we, we said earlier, this, uh, this is being recorded and we will have some Q&A after, after the presentation. Uh, down the lower left-hand side, you'll see a lot of acronyms. And as I stay, as I say the acronyms, I'll try to also explain what that acronym is because this space, this this area has a lot of acronyms, and we want to make sure that we're explaining what those are, such as ICE, which is you know internal combustion engine, which is a diesel or gas. But let's talk a little bit about us at Tom's Truck Center. We've been around since 1949, uh, primarily in medium uh, duty trucks, and now also in heavy duty trucks. So we're real familiar with the space. And one of the things that we've always prided ourselves on is getting our getting that information to our customers so they can make informed decisions about the future, about what's going on, what's happening. You know, and there's been a lot of change just recently, just in the last few years, there's been a lot, a lot of change and a lot of questions because of that change. So we're hopefully, hopefully going to be able to um, uh, answer some of those questions. Maybe not all of them, but maybe in some of the Q&A we will. Uh, you know, we're a full service commercial deal dealership. We sell commercial vehicles from class one all the way through eight. And, uh, you know, we have new and used trucks. We have rental trucks. We lease. We have parts and service. So, you know, we really try to prevent or provide that entire umbrella uh, coverage for our commercial customers uh, so they have a lot of options. You know, our goal from the beginning is, is to keep people on the road. Actually, it's our mission statement. Our goal is uh, we're driven to our motto, I should say, is uh, we're driven to keep you driving. So with that, let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. So here we see a real colorful slide here off to the right. Lisa will go over that in just a little while. But really, it's all about, you know, California and what they've implemented uh, today and, and recently and in and, and, and the coming years here, uh, the diesel regulations uh, regarding vehicles that are over 14,000 GVW. So if your fleet, and I imagine that's might be some of the reason why you're here. You have a fleet that has some of these 14,000 GVW trucks or higher that might have diesel uh, in them or diesel heavy, or maybe there's a mix of diesel and gas. Well, this is probably the reason why you're here. We're hopefully that we're going to, you know, we're going to be able to answer some questions. But if you know this, as far as regulations are concerned, and I'm sure some of you do who do have fleets, 2009 and older, that no longer on the road. The only thing that's compliant right now is 2010 and above. So that's the ones that can be registered. And, you know, those are actually going to start to creep up on us as well. Every year it kind of gets a little bit more restrictive there. But, the you know, the existing diesels that we you do have right now in your fleet, they have a limited what's called useful life. And we'll go, we're going to go over that a little bit uh, and explain a little bit more about what that means. But, but Lisa, you know, why are we here? What, why are these regulations taking place and why have they been coming on us so hard? Uh, yeah, Tim, good good question. And really, it's really been about our health code uh, standards. California really has an air quality requirement. That air quality requirement requires uh, the air quality to be decarbonized. And so what we're looking at here is a map of California. 
And that map is looking at um, a lot of red and a lot of yellow. That red is reflecting a score of F and the yellow is reflecting a, a score of D. Um, we don't see any blue, which is the A and B that you use. You can see up in the upper right hand corner for the legend. Um, and so what we really have to do is um, is really make sure that primarily we're cleaning up our air quality. And as I move into the next slide, we'll talk about what this means as it relates to the truck industry. Um, okay. The truck industry really has to uh, decarbonize. Um, as you can see in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, we've really been focused on a lot of GHG, NOx, PM, and different warranties to support the diesel truck industry uh, to reduce its uh, pollution into the air. Um, and so what we have now is January 1, 2025, we have a lot of legacy and medium diesel trucks that are 18 years or 800,000 miles um, and older, which will now have to be taken off the roadways. Um, so these are probably just the old trucks, but if the truckification isn't subject to a measure, uh, that, then those requirements will not have to be met. So we'll talk more about that as, as you move forward. I see, okay, very good information there. All right, so let's talk about, you know, the diesel trucks that you might have right now in your fleet. Well, there's a thing called an advanced clean truck or ACT regulation. And due to the uh, ACT regulations, dealerships and trucks, uh, truck industries, you know, we anticipate that a lot of customers are really going to be holding on to their vehicles longer. And we're going to explain why that can be, right? So there are some options here. So we expect that people are going to be holding on to their trucks longer, and there might even be a surge of compliant used truck purchases also, because these are things that are still available and 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 available for your fleet. So Lisa, can you share with us what this schedule here on the right means? Yeah, this is the OEM sales that are being regulated to ultimately eliminate ICE sales by 2035. So uh, they need to be slowly and gradually uh, sell more zero emission technologies in the future. And this chart is the OEM sales percentage schedule um, by vehicle group and model year. And you can see there's a slow introduction of the ZEV technology. If you look at the top yellow, uh, top orange line, that specifically is the class four and class eight, at eight meaning the, the day cab tractors, which if you look at the far right corner of the uh, chart, you can see 75%. So by 2035, 75% of ZEV sales in this category um, will be required by the OEMs. As we move to the next line, which is blue, this is the class 2B and 3, more like pickup trucks and vans. All the OEMs need to be achieving 55% ZEV sales in California. By on the far right side, you can see uh, 2035 needs to be 55%. If we go to the black line on the bottom uh, end there, you can see that this is only going to be for class seven, which are uh, in class eight sleeper tractor trucks and the heavy, heavy duty kind of specialty types of trucks that'll need to achieve 40% ZEV sales in California by 2035. I see. So dealerships and OEMs combined have these types of things that are that are going to be mandated on them to sell a percentage of. So that's interesting. That actually affects everyone. So let's talk about the options then. We were talking about that earlier. What about the diesels, gasoline? Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the diesels. You know, a diesel can have a useful life that can be extended all the way through 245. Uh, I'm sorry, 2045, not 240, 2045. And, you know, and, and gasoline right now is still a widely available option. And then that could be available through 2035 with a useful life up to 2045 as well. And then, of course, we have the zero emission vehicles well, where there's, you know, a lot of legacy. And when I say legacy, it's, you know, dealers, or I should say manufacturers that we're familiar with, Ford, Isuzu, and I can go on, uh, but not a startup, but they're starting to have some good availability as well. And they're yeah, bringing those to the market. So let's talk a little bit about the diesel powered um, engine, if you will, um, you know, and what engines are available. Well, if you don't know, and this is really the reason why we wanted to start this webinar. If you didn't already know, the 2024, most 2024 diesel engines are no longer going to be available to purchase next year and beyond. It doesn't mean that they're going to not be building them anymore, but they're not going to be able to be purchased in California. So what 2024s are out there and what's available is kind of what's left in most applications. As an example, the Isuzu, uh, NPR, and all the way to the NRR, the what, what's on the ground right now is what's left. Now, the good thing is, is a lot of dealerships, not just us, a lot of dealerships in your area have really purchased 
forward, you know, buying up a bunch as, as much as they can to have as much um, uh, availability as they could to, to, to give to, to customers. But once those are gone, they're gone. So maybe if you were thinking before, you know, I may not be purchasing a truck, you might want to start thinking about, well, I may need to start doing something sooner so that I can continue and extend that useful life and have that diesel model in my company for longer. Um, and then, you know, 2025s, there actually are still some available of uh, available 2025 diesel engines as well. Uh, it's limited and it's going to get even more limited as we go forward. So you can kind of see the trend. It's going to get a little bit more complicated, a little bit more challenging to start to get to these diesels. But, you know, Ford still is going to make a 2025 diesel for some applications, Cummins, Detroit, Volvo, things like that. Uh, now, we talked about the useful life and how long you can keep that existing truck Lisa will go over a little bit more of that technical stuff in a second, but really let's talk about the small fleets. How, who, who does this affect? Now, if you're a fleet of under 50, you know, a little bit of caveats there too, but there's other things that you also have to be under. But if you're a fleet of 50 or lower, then you're considered a small fleet. So some of these things don't necessarily apply to you now, and you have some options to maybe extend that ICE, internal combustion engine model in your company, if you're not necessarily ready to go into a ZEV, like in all the things that go on in a ZEV or zero emission vehicle, whether it's battery electric, hydrogen, or so forth. So there are, though, restrictions, and it doesn't apply to everybody, but it does apply to some. And, you know, Lisa, can you share with us a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, so th what's going to happen is there specifically are six uh, types of vocations that will be regulated. But, Tim, you're right. The small fleets that are 50 or less can literally keep their diesels for as long as they like. So if you don't fall into one of these six regulated uh, vocations, uh, then keep that in mind, please. So those that will be regulated are the, the drage operations of fleet sizes over 50 medium heavy duty trucks that will be operating in California, a fleet um, or facility with over 50 million annual gross revenue that will direct, control, or manage California trucks, um, a California warehouse facility of over 100,000 square feet, and any California government entity, and also a transportation refrigeration reefer trucks. So those are the vacations that must remove old diesel the night trucks. Plus, they're going to have to also fall into some type of schedule related to procuring uh, the zero emission vehicle technology um, over time. So that time period, meaning by that's that chart that we showed you previously, the 2035. So group one is 2035 and, and group three, which is the heavy duty, will be 2042. But transportation refrigeration trucks and government entities um, have a have a measure by 2027 or 2029. Wow, that's pretty quick. You know, you said something earlier that I want everyone to pay attention to. You know, you could have a fleet of say five trucks, but you own multiple companies and maybe you have a, you know, gross uh, revenue of over 50 million. And it doesn't even matter if the other companies even have trucks in them, you could then not be considered a small fleet and then you would be regulated. It could even go as far as, you know, how many trucks you get. It doesn't matter how many trucks you don't have. You could be even controlling other fleets. So really important to pay attention to those little details, I would imagine. So yeah, let's absolutely. talk. So let's talk a little bit about the gasoline powered uh, vehicle. So may, and this is another reason why we wanted to have this meeting is a lot of people don't realize that gasoline is now an option in other, in, in ways that maybe you didn't consider before, or maybe why you didn't consider gas before, you know, gasoline engines, let's just use a Suzu, for example, it was just available in their lighter duty options or li lighter GVW trucks. Now they're available through their entire line, all the way up to close, uh, class five, which is 19 five GVW. And they've done that so that there is that model, that, that internal combustion engine model for those customers that need that fuel and go type opportunity where they don't have that overnight charging type of, uh, you know, behaviors inside their business model. And also, you know, your pricing will tend, yeah, but diesels really, they, they, they're more robust, they last longer. Well, yeah, for all intents and purposes, that's true. They, they are very robust. And that's probably why a lot of people like that diesel engine. You know, they put a lot of miles on them, they run them hard. 
here's the thing, the gasoline engine, if it's really properly maintained and you've done a really good job doing so, these engines actually go, you know, over 200,000 miles if you've done a really good job main, maintaining them. So their durability has come up over uh, over uh, long, over this last few years, actually, actually, probably the last decade, it's actually gotten a lot, lot better. So now it's an option. If GVW was the only reason, now it's an option for you in those GVWs that you were not having before in the diesel. So that's good to know. And they're available through 2035. So let's quickly touch on the Zev power truck. So I want to make sure that everyone understands this is not necessarily to say you need to go Zev or you need to buy gas, or you need to buy diesel. We're just wanting to give you guys the information, the companies and people in, in this meeting, the information so they can make an informed decision. The Zev power truck, it, it's, you know, there's a higher upfront investment cost. These are new technologies. However, there are certain uh, incentives out there, and there's many different programs that you know you can apply for to really lower that procurement cost of that ZEV uh, vehicle. But it also does require infrastructure, or de you know deciding the route and where I need to go and where can I charge in the middle of the day and how can I change my business model to be able to accommodate the ranges that are involved in maybe a zero emission or a battery electric type of a truck. You know, it could be a complicated purchase uh, procedure or process. You know, the, the incentives can be a little complicated, a little bit uh, difficult. So you're going to want to partner with a dealership that understands those incentive processes and all the programs that are available. But, you know, class six and seven is still tough right now on that battery electric. You know, the, the batteries are really heavy, so it takes away a lot of payload, which is really important for that class six, seven uh, customer. But also the range, the range isn't quite there just yet. So that's a really complicated business model right there if you're in that class six, seven. But again, the good news is you can still hold on to diesels. You can still you know, maintain them and, and do that for some time now. But but Lisa, you know, are the legacies, you know, and when I say legacies, are the other big companies, are they producing ZEV technologies? Yeah, so we've got a lot of choices and there'll be more to come as these OEMs each have to um, put together their own schedule to meet the mandates of the of the advanced clean truck regulation. But so Tim, I'll show you on the next slide. But yeah, class one and class eight legacy OEMs all are going to have and going to continue to have more zero emission technology choices available. In our next uh, Tom's Truck Talk webinar, we'll be going over some more advancements in our next topic. Um, so I'll move on to the next slide here. You can see that this slide has got um, a long list of about 28 different OEMs that have sold uh, medium heavy duty trucks um, through the rebate program in California. Uh, this began in 2011, so we've been doing this for about 13 years now. And the le legacy OEMs that are on this list and on this chart are Ford, GM, Volvo, Freightliner, Kenworth, Navistar, and Peterbilt. Um, Isuzu's model year 2025 just now became available over the last two weeks, so you're going to eventually see um, a bar of Isuzu in this chart too. He now will have a baby class eight that will become available on quarter one 2025. Um, and you'll see a large portion of new types of a vertical market of different OEMs like uh, Nikola, Mold, uh, Motive, Phoenix. Um, you can see Nikola is the second bar in the far left-hand corner. It's got uh, it's the second highest sales of 623. Um, they also provide a hydrogen, which Tom's uh, supports. And Hyundai will also be coming up with a Hyundai that will be available in, in model year 2025, Tim. Interesting, interesting. That's good to know. Yeah, so I'll go over the, uh, you know, you talked a lot about the diesels and some of the regulations where I chimed in on. Um, it's important to kind of provide you with all sorts of good information so that the fleets, the businesses, I mean, the drivers that are all out there um, participating with this technology understand the name of the game in California has absolutely changed. So beware. I um, mean, this is a list of your checklist to get you prepared. Uh, the trucker's ID uh, began reporting in 2024. It's always primarily been for only diesel. However, in 2024, all technologies have become part of the truck and bus regulation. Um, the second item is the transportation refrigeration units. Those started reporting in 2023. They have a measure to fall into as far as zero emission technology. Warehouses are in the same boat. Reporting began uh, July of 2024. They also have a measure uh, to slowly introduce zero emission technology. And the clean truck check is specific to diesels um, that need to report, whether you're a commercial truck that's 14,000 pounds in diesel, 
your personal uh, truck, or you're an RV. All of these 14,000 pounds and over diesels have to report beginning 2024. And um, you also have to, beginning January 1, 2025, you have to do a heavy duty a maintenance inspection, whether you are in or outside of California. If you use the roadways in California, one time, one mile, one time a year, um, that will impact you. And this is the testing that's required. So beginning January 1, 2025 and in 2026, one truck must be tested twice a year. That same one truck in 2027 must be tested four times. So imagine, Tim, you've got a fleet of 10. In one year in 2027, you're going to be testing 40 times. Um, crazy, you guys. So it, this is not about is there emission regulation. It's about your emissions from your tailpipe. So you must pass this successfully within 30 days prior to the deadline due date. There's a table for the deadline. This is specifically tied to your DMV registration. So if you don't test and you don't pass, you will not get a renewal for your DMV registration, Tim. Wow, that is interesting information. You guys, you, or folks, you can see some. there's some links there that you can go to Trucker's ID and register, and then also the clean truck, uh, register for clean truck check as well. If you have 14,000 GVW or higher compliant diesel trucks, you're going to need to start looking into that. If you have questions, definitely reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help. But I mean, what if they have gasoline in their fleet? Does that does that have to do this testing as well? Yeah, Tim, no. So good question. And no, gasoline's fully exempt, and so is Ooh. zero admission. Okay, so the gasoline engine, then maybe another plus there for a gasoline engine is that you don't have to do those testings. And by the way, uh, I would start probably start looking around in your area to see who does these testings. We obviously do them for our customers. We have them as part of our warranties and our maintenance plans. Uh, they're included in those. But also, if you are around us in Santa Fe Springs and Santa Ana, we provide that testing as well if you can't find someone else. So let's do some quick tips and takeaways. So we have some time for some Q&A. Um, small fleets can use the diesels as long as they want. Okay, and the useful life of a, uh, a heavy duty diesel is up to 800,000 miles. Uh, purchase, you know, current use compliant trucks if you want to. That's a, that's an option right now so that you can continue to extend uh, your business model using an ICE technology still if you're not ready to electrify. And then gasoline uh, engines are available all the way through 2035. You know, extending the life of your truck with maybe a maintenance plan or warranty is also probably a good idea. Kind of reduce some of your operating costs. So those are things I think now are becoming more important if you're going to keep or the model is to keep that diesel truck on the road longer uh and if that's what you're looking to do but what else do you have there lisa yeah so going back to the clean truck check this will definitely have an impact on your operations immediately and beginning january 2025 so get up to date on that it's tied to your dmv registration you will not get a renewal if you don't have your testing successfully passed within 30 days of your deadline date zev technology is expensive it's complex but it is the future truck technology Tom's um, will also be introducing and has a ZEV complimentary program. This is our try before you buy program. It's a 30 day free rental. There'll be some restrictions that apply um, and we'll go more into that in our next Tom's truck talk, which will be a topic on zero admissions options. Uh, the date for this will be announced um, by next month. And uh, Tim, if we have any uh, questions, we can go into questions. Well, great. Yeah, I hope that I know that went a lot of information really fast. So um, I'm sure there are some questions. And who's checking those questions for us? Let me see. I think it's Brad. That's Brad. I'm here. Um, right now, you guys have done such a great job of explaining everything. We don't have any questions. <laughs> I can't um, imagine. No, we can't be that good, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, so, um, can, I can throw out some questions or maybe Brad, you might okay, want to throw real, out a question. Real quick. Real quick, um, I just got notification that uh, this meeting will end at 11 o'clock. So um, there's a timer on it that we just just realized. So well, if folks we need out there, if you have questions, get them in right away. Yeah. But go ahead, go Lisa, ahead Lisa, you were saying something? Was that Nicole? No, you, Lisa, go ahead. You were wanting oh, to say okay. something? Okay, so yeah, so Tim, I would like to hit on uh, the small fleet requirements. So, so are you saying that small fleets um, are exempt from this program? Is that what I'm saying? Well, I mean, you know, you've talked about the small fleets may or may not 
be compliant, right. right? Or not may or may not have to be compliant. So I want to just ask the question to you: Are small fleets exempt from the program? I, is it actually? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that back to you because you're the <laughs> pro. I don't want to I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess up the answer because these things can get complicated because there's a lot of yes and no's, right? Yeah, there is a lot of that. That's correct. So I'll I'll, I'll do my best to try to uh, try to compartmentalize it. So. The answer is yes and no. <laughs> okay, so so uh, uh, the the small fleets are are not exempt exactly, but they don't have to comply if they're not regulated. Um, so anything that's a small fleet that's 50 and under um, doesn't have to remove their diesel trucks at all. They can keep it for as long as they would like. If you are a small fleet that's um, under a contract, maybe with a carrier that's a large fleet, you may be required to report, or you'll have to have your contractor report, and they'll fall, and you'll fall under that measure. So that's kind of the complicated things as it relates to it. So um, maybe Tim, do we? Know, I'll ask this question to make sure the, have the a, audience we do have knows. A question. This oh, good. Um, Krista, um, I'm going to Alamia. Um, asked, is there a list of the six regulations that Lisa mentioned? Yeah, and we'll be, we, this meeting has been recorded and we'll also be sending out the presentation to all of those that signed up. So yes, we'll have that available to you. So okay, everyone and, that's- and If I may, the chat, the chat is uh, disabled. So you need to go through the Q&A port for questions. I think we had a hand raiser here. Um, and it was uh, Hansel Sakal. Um, I guess maybe do we want to try to unmute it? Hansel? Is it is it something you want to put in the Q and A, or did you want to? I can um, try to here, unmute. Okay, here, so actually, I just saw some more questions here. Are CNG required? Uh, require clean truck? Yes, they are. Okay. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, here's is another there, one. Uh, where can we find the 2027 me measure from Krista again? Oh, that would be for the transportation refrigeration units um, and the government, the government entities. So I can send out a schedule. And as we move into, uh, Brad, as we move into the uh, Tom's Truck Center Truck Talk, we'll be um, uh, providing more information through other webinars and get more in the weeds with some of these schedules. Um, but I can also make sure that I make that available um, through our Tom's Truck Talk link. If for some Perfect. reason maybe you weren't able to get through the Q and A and put and find out where that is to put in your question and answers, you have Lisa McGee's email right there, and you have my email right there. Please feel free to email us if you have, if you want to email us directly, and we can answer some of those more drill down questions because this this really does need to kind of go through a lot of q a if this if that if this if that you may or you may not so uh you know if, you, if you're definitely under a certain amount of revenue in your company and you're definitely uh, uh you know below 50 units and you don't own any other companies it's fairly likely that you're not going to be regulated uh to this right now so tim i'd like to ask you a question on the inventory that you brought up as it relates to gasoline and diesel so gasoline um, will continue to be available it's not under any measure you mentioned that it was not in the clean truck check so uh oems uh, like uh, isuzu will be one of those that are starting to did you say make models that were normally not available in gasoline that is absolutely correct yeah for instance uh, as an example the nrr or the 19,500 gbw class five Isuzu was not available in a gas engine before all this happened and now it is it's available the gas engines available across the entire line that Isuzu has so Ford for instance also has a lot of gasoline options all the way through Brad I think through class seven is that correct uh the diesels stop at class five for California but there will be and we this is breaking news people Ford will have a, a diesel for their f550 for 2025. So thanks, Eric Alves, for that. Um, we do have another question from Renee Castillo. Uh, we have a small fleet of 15 trucks, but we're not allowed to renew truck registration. It's a 2008 international diesel truck. So we cannot use this truck, correct? That, that is, is absolutely correct. correct. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Anything that's mm -hmm. 2009 and older is no longer allowed in California. And the worst part about that, you need to get rid of that truck in your fleet in order to be a compliant fleet at all. Yeah, and, and that counts say, against your fleet. 
Yeah, and when we say don't just get rid of the truck, make sure that it's actually the title and the registration is taken out of you or your company's name completely. Don't just sell it for cash and then have someone not take that registration and turn it over. You have to make sure that the <laughs> registration comes off. Okay, that's, We've found yeah. this, you know, we're working with a lot of fleets. We found that they, what they would say, well, I, we sold those trucks. And then whoever they sold them to never took them and re you know, took the registration out of their name and registered in, the, in their name. Uh, titled, and, and the then, title. And, the title. Titled, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, titled. Yeah. And then it still showed up under their fleet. And it was, it, it's, it's been it's very difficult for them. Yep, it is a nightmare. Yeah. It is a nightmare. And we have another question. Uh, this is from Ray and Allison Orgill. Um, if, if they're not in our under one of our programs, how much are the clean truck tests? Uh, uh, how much is the clean truck check um, testing? It's about, yes. I think, well, well, I know Tom's Trucks is going to include it in all of its services. Um, right. And I want to say it's, it's, Probably literally a, maybe a hundred you know bucks. We or should something probably like not. That. We should no, probably it, not answer it, that. It we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're we're including all our services though. How much? So let's hold on. Time out. <laughs> we're all talking at the same time. I think it's important. Let's let's get the actual factual information. We'll email everyone what that is, but it's not going to be crazy. That's a yeah. great question though. We weren't prepared for that one. That's interesting. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I can yeah. say this, Tim and Brad. Um, I did get already uh Pee Wee, who's our vice president of services. So he's gonna be including our clean truck checks in an, on all of our services as part of a complimentary. Perfect. Oh, we have more that? questions. Yep. Hansel. Uh, Hansel was able to get through. So great. Uh we are a scaffolding company. We only have about 12 medium duty diesel engines. He knows some freight miners. All of our vehicles are 2013 and newer. As of now, we have two vehicle registrations on hold with this message, CARB slash SB 210 compliance required. Being a construction company, are we still obligated to come to comply with all of this process? Yeah, so I'll, I'll chime in, try to chime in. So I, the first question I'd ask is to make sure your model year and your engine year um, aren't different and more than likely they are. So we need to look at your engine year, which is typically older than your model year. Um, if that engine is too old, um, it could be throwing off your compliance. The other thing that I can think of is that um, there might be something deep in your uh, in your deep in previous diesel diesel owned trucks that might be um, throwing off your compliance. But um, let's take this offline, Hansel, and we could certainly give you support um, and you could, you've got my email address there. Um, I'm happy to, to provide support. We do this all the time for our customers right now, whether you're yeah. a customer or not. Yeah, whether you're a customer of ours or not, Hansel, whether you've purchased stuff from us or not, it's irrelevant. Uh, give Lisa an email with that question and she can help dig in and and because there's something else going on there. It can't just be if all you have are 2013s or newer, there's something else happening there. And she's really good at being able to flesh that out. So definitely reach out to her on that email. Okay, we have another question from Krista. Um, if we have gasoline vehicles such as a pickup truck and transit connect man that are 2005s, do we have to take that out of our fleet? Nope. Well, I guess the, the question is, it has to be 14,000 GBW or higher. It sounds like these are below. Is that right, Lisa? Yeah, they're good. They're good. Yep, you're they're good. Fine. And also because it's gasoline. Yep, mm -hmm. that's correct. All right, let's see, if we, let's see if we have any other questions. None so far. Okay. And well, we, yeah, we, and got, we made it past the 11 o'clock mark. So that, yeah, we went a little, little further. That's fine. Well, I just wanted to say, if, if unless a question sneaks in here in the last minute, I just want to say thanks everyone for you know attending. Uh, we're hoping that this was uh, beneficial for most people. Uh, if if it was, please email us and let us know. Yeah, we'd like to see more of this type of content. We'd like to see more of this information. And maybe as we go, this can grow and actually get uh, you know a little bit bigger. Um, again, we just want to provide information for for everyone out there because there's a lot of changes and a lot of things going on. But take a look. You know, keep an eye out for our zero emissions options uh, on our next tr Tom's Truck Talk, and uh, look for that email. And hopefully, we'll see you there as well. Uh, if your questions weren't answered or you weren't able to answer a question or ask a question here, feel free to email Lisa or I. We'll be more than happy to help. No obligation required. 
All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the time that you spent with us.